Welcome to this month's tip. This is part two of a three-part updated tip based on the July 2003 tip titled, Patterns of Features Used to Establish Datums Are Tricky. In part one, we discussed ways to use patterns of planar and coaxial cylindrical features to establish a datum feature. In this tip, we will discuss how to establish a datum using more complex patterns. Patterns of Features Used to Establish a Datum, part two of three. As we discussed in part one of this tip, the Y14.5 standard tells us we can use a pattern of features to establish a datum. For this tip, we will look at a pattern made by two parallel holes. The category or type of datum feature a pattern of two parallel holes falls into is a linear extrusion. The standard explains that if a primary datum feature is a linear extrusion, the datum would be a line on a plane. The same is true if two parallel holes are used as a secondary datum feature, but the plane and line will be constrained by the primary datum. For our example part, this means datum B, the line on a plane, will be constrained to be perpendicular to datum plane A. Here we have figure 4A, which is a part we call housing. This part has a pattern of two parallel cylindrical holes that are 6 mm in diameter. We are using these holes to establish datum feature B. Datum feature B is referenced at regardless of material boundary, or RMB. Because datum feature B is at RMB, using the two holes as a pattern produces a much different effect than if we had used one hole as datum feature B and the other hole as datum feature C. As we will discuss in part 3 of this tip, when the datum feature is referenced at MMB, this is not the case. By using the two holes as a pattern, we are conveying that both holes are of equal importance in our assembly and therefore need to be considered together as datum feature B. Let's look at the part in more detail and discuss how the datum reference frame is established. We see that this surface of the part is datum feature A. In our datum reference frame, this will be datum plane A and it will be in line with the surface of the planar datum feature A simulator. In our example, the simulator is this base plate and you can see we have labeled datum plane A here. It is the XY plane. Next we have datum feature B, which we have discussed is this pattern of two 6 mm diameter holes. The simulator for datum feature B is two cylindrical pins that are 53.34 mm apart as specified by a basic dimension on the drawing. These pins are perpendicular to datum A. Since B is referenced at RMB, the pins must vary in size to reach maximum contact with the two holes. Datum B is this ZX plane together with the Z axis, which is centered between the two holes. These planes and axis establish the coordinate axes that represent the datum reference frame AB. Notice that the base plate of the simulator also has two very accurate reference holes. This enables easy establishment of the datum reference frame. To inspect this part, we will first mate datum feature A with its simulator. Then we will grow the datum feature simulator B pins. The part will center itself based on how the form, size, orientation, and relative location error of the two holes mates with the two datum feature simulator pins. Once the part is mated with the datum feature simulators, the part is related to the datum reference frame and can now be inspected. Our example shows how to use a physical datum feature simulator. You could also use a measurement system software or point cloud software. As is always the case, make sure you establish your datum reference frame correctly by modeling datum feature simulator concepts and requirements provided in ASME Y14.5 to avoid unacceptable inaccurate measurement data. In this tip and part one, we discussed several different ways to use patterns of features to establish a datum. In part three, we are going to explore what happens when our features are referenced at MMB and why you may not need to use a pattern to establish a datum. Remember, at Techies, GD&T rules. See you next tip.